How do you make custom transitions in OBS? We're going to show you how to do that on today's video. Everyone, Ryan Scott from Church Setup here. And again, we're going to talk about how to do things in OBS, continuing this series of how to do some of the things that make your stream look a little bit better, make it have a little bit more professional appeal. And one of the things that uh, that I like to do, I think is really nice, is to have a custom transition that just, it just looks really good. You don't use it for everything. A lot of times you just cut or fade because that's what looks better. If you have like two um, two camera views and you're gonna switch from you know this one to that one or from far away to up close, you don't want custom transitions hitting every single time. But if you're going from like a speaker to an image or speaker to a video or something like that, then having a custom transition can really, really add some polish to your stream, such as something like this. So now I'm in another scene in OBS. I'm going to transition back out. And that's the custom transition that we're talking about. So uh, how do you do this? We're going to go back into OBS and uh, I'm just cutting over. I'm not playing that transition again, um, which if you're wondering how you do that, I have the transition set as default for my custom transition. You can see down here it is CS Stinger but you can cut, you can fade, and then you can also choose something else uh, down here. So you get three options if you wanna click. Um, you could also set up uh, short keys and put those onto your stream deck if you want. But uh, all of that is how you control it. Let's talk about how you actually get it in there. How do you get that file in and set it up? You can see mine is set here. Um, well, I don't actually have it set here. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to do that. We're actually gonna go in here and uh, I'm going to click and I'm going to put add stinger and it's going to bring up some options. So I'm going to name this uh, CS stinger example so I can delete it later. I can sell example, right? And uh, so it's it's got this A and then you'll have B will be the, the one you're transitioning to. So first it's going to ask you for a video file and uh, your transition is a video. So I'm gonna come down here and go find my, my video transition church setup. I'm gonna go into video assets and then uh, stream files. So here's all of my files that I've used for my church setup streams. And you can see this one's named csstinger.webm. So I'm gonna open that one. And that is really all there is to it. So I have monitor off. I don't wanna hear the, oh, I do wanna hear the audio because I like the audio of that little click. So I wanna be able to hear it. So I'm gonna switch it to monitor and output. Um, I don't need to change this. There is one thing that I will need to change and that is the transition point. I'm gonna leave it right now so you can see kind of uh, what, what the thing is. You can do it time or frames um, depending on what you're doing. So I'm gonna leave it time and I'm gonna click okay. And now I have this stinger example. So I'm gonna click it and uh, you're gonna watch it happen. And then I'm gonna come back to OBS and see, see what's happening here. So I'm gonna click this. Oh, I gotta click it up here. So here we go. Now you saw the stinger actually happen. The transition actually happened, but there, the switch of scenes happened before the transition. And when I transition back, you're gonna see it again. It's actually gonna switch back to the OBS view before that gate closes and uh, it looks like this, which that is not ideal, right? We want we want this scene or this view to, to stay until the thing closes, and then we wanna switch to the other view. So I'm gonna come back into my properties here. I'm gonna click properties for the stinger, and right here is where I do that. Now I can do it in frames, um, which if I'm going, if my video file is 30 frames per second, one second would be 30 frames. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try that. I'm just going to go 30 frames. Uh, so that'll be one second in. I'm going to see if that actually works. So here we go. We're going to transition and see what happens. So you see that was kind of perfect. I, I, I want to look at it really close. I, it might have changed right there at the very end, but let's, let's look and see. You can see a tiny change right before that gate closes. So you can see 30 frames is not enough. I need to add a few more. So I'm gonna come back over into my settings here. Let's go back to OBS 
and I am going to click properties. And instead of doing frames, um, I could just switch that to like 40 frames. It'd probably be fine. I'm going to go into milliseconds time. I'm going to put, let's just try 750 milliseconds. See what that looks like. So that seemed right. Let me see if I can see it peek in again. No. So that's, that's the right timing. So 750 milliseconds or whatever I put there um, is the exact amount of time. So when that gate closes and you have just a few moments, it switches to the other scene and now you have a transition that works. And that's all there is to it. Now, how do you get these, um, these awesome transitions or, or whatever? I'm gonna show you how to do that. There's two, uh, really three of my favorite sources are um are over here into the web browser so there's one source called nerd or die and if you go there you can look at all of their packages and everything um let's watch this demo real quick and um we're gonna watch this as it plays um you can see it's showing all of the elements there uh right there was the transition right there you see it so that's the transition you get with that package it's a really fast one um but that's the one that you will get if you download that streaming package so nerd or die has a bunch of different packages you can download them you can you can edit them you can customize them uh if you know how to work after effects and you'll get the uh, cool transitions and you can you can see all the different ones they have there However, there's another source as well, and it's own, uh, own3d.com. Let's see if I can pull that down a little bit. Own3d.com. And if you come in here, you can actually get the transitions by themselves. You can see Stinger Transitions is an option here under Overlays and Stream Designs. And they have a bunch of different ones here uh, that you can get. And I don't know if it's going to... We'll just uh, look and see one that looks cool. Maybe this one. So maybe it has a video file we can watch it happen. It's showing an example here. But let's open this video file and just see what that looks like. So if I would actually get out of the way, you can see it's going to close kind of like mine does. And then it's got some animations that go along with it, um, which is a match for their whole like suite in that one dilt but um you can get a bunch of those overlays and stuff here they have other overlays as well they have web banners talking overlays a bunch of different stuff uh, but that's how you can find a animated transition that you can just download and use if you don't have any um experience in editing like adobe after effects or something like that you can download a file from one of these and just use it um, however, if you do have someone that can do video editing and stuff like that, uh, videohive.net is actually a really good resource for stuff like this. And um, you can get, you know, logo stingers or whatever transitions and you can download and edit them. Um, there's all kinds of, of great resources here. Again, that's videohive.net. And um, you can get After Effects templates, you can get Premiere templates, Apple Motion, um, stock footage, you can get a bunch of stuff here. They're a little expensive, um, but if you want a really cool logo transition and you have someone that can actually edit Adobe After Effects files, you can go there and get it and it's really cheap, it's really easy to use. Um, I highly recommend them as a resource. Uh, I've used a bunch of their templates from there. But um, if you just want to download a transition, then I would just come back here and I would go through um, either all of their transitions, which if you hover over and go to Stinger Transitions, there's gonna be a bunch of different ones. And if you buy these just one off, they're gonna be a lot cheaper than um, getting an entire package. And uh, you can go through and, and find one that, that doesn't look crazy. Again, these are made for video game uh, video game streamers. So some of them are, are kind of crazy and wouldn't necessarily work for a church. But if you can get a simple and clean one, um, you can find one that, you know, fits your kind of branding, then um, see how much they are. Uh, $16. 
for just the transition. It's kind of expensive for a transition when you can get the whole package for like forty dollars. Or wait, no, their stuff is pretty expensive. Um, right now, if you use the the code Spooky, um, you can get fifty percent off of everything, but it's still like forty bucks for the whole package. So just depends on on what you want to do. But if you buy one of their full packages, if you buy a full package from Nerd or Die, uh, most I would say all of them come with a custom transition that you can use. Um, but that's just some of the resources. My transition that I'm using for this one, which I will go back and show you one more time. Well, I changed the transition so it's not working now. I'm gonna have to manually trigger it. But um, the, that file was actually something, I think I got that one from Nerd or Die but it, it might've been on 3d. I can't remember which uh, provider and there's some other providers too that do um, Twitch overlays and stuff like that, which is basically the same thing. They're made to work with OBS. And so if you want your custom transition, that's the way to do it. So hopefully that was helpful and hopefully you find a good one. Learn when to use it and not to use it is an important thing. You don't want to use it if you're, you know, switching from, uh, you know, one camera angle to another, uh, because it can get really annoying if you're having this long transition between all all things. But it's usually when you're switching from one thing to another. Like if you're switching from your video feed to an image or you're switching from your video feed to like your announcements or a video or something else. Maybe, maybe it's another video feed from another location. But as long as it's just switching camera angles, I would just use cut or perhaps a really short fade. Um, but learning how to use them, when to use them and, uh, having a good one is a good way to, uh, to really kind of upgrade your stream. So hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions you'd like us to answer on our streams about live streaming, about church video equipment, about any of that, you can send that to support at churchsetup.com and we will try to help you. We'll also try to answer those questions here on our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching. Subscribe so that you don't miss any more videos and we will see you hopefully on the next video. We'll see you later. <laughs>